like I was thinking of like okay well I could go on a very crack body rant but it's a little bit out there I would just that <laughs> okay <laughs> because uh, the thing that really intrigued me for this paper was mm-hmm. can you tell more about like what was the intuition behind using that like how did the idea spurs into your mind to use these uh, influence between uh, robots was it something that you uh, figured out technically and then labeled it using um, the terms of cognitive psychology or like how, what was the inception point like did you refer to cognitive psychology uh, first and then maybe said like okay can i map to uh, technical terms or was it something that you figured out as a roadblock in technical uh, jargons and then said hey this is what even cognitive psychologists might have to say what was the what was the path that you took for an intuition um yeah that's a great question so i think the best way to explain why this works in terms of intuition, which is not the question you're asking, but I'll, I'll answer that in a second. The best way, the best way to explain why this works is um, we can show in the paper that this relates to rewarding agents for having a high mutual information between their actions. And that kind of makes sense because a big problem in multi-agent is there's a combinatorially explosive cost of exploration. So if you think about the the joint, like if you have a certain number of agents the action space expands exponentially with the number of agents. Finding the right policy in the joint action space is very hard. Like all of the agents have to simultaneously try the right action for you to realize that it's a good one, which is a much less likely to happen randomly. So you can think of this as like an exploration incentive that makes agents uh, more willing to try coordinated policies, which I think makes more sense. Um, the other piece of intuition is like, um, if you're familiar with the intrinsic motivation literature, so the idea behind intrinsic motivation is in RL. I think RL is a great framework. It's very general. The problem is you need a reward function to optimize. And in many problems, it's like, what is that? Like, what is a baby's reward function? What's it optimizing? How is it learning? And so intrinsic motivation tries to answer that by saying, like, maybe the baby is curious. And that's what it's optimizing for. Or maybe the baby is seeking empowerment, which is like a very specific um intrinsic motivation that's saying maximize the mutual information between your actions and your future state. So basically what that does is say you want to keep your options open because you're maximizing the entropy of the state. Um, So you want to be able to enter lots of states, but you want to be able to do that in a very controlled way. So the next state you enter should depend heavily on your action. So you're minimizing the entropy of the next state given your action. I'm saying math out loud. I always hate when people do that to me. Sorry. But (laughs) um, Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so, yeah, we should we should get a whiteboard. Mark. That's what we need. <laughs> but um, yeah. So so that that's a that's an intrinsic motivation that's been around in the literature for a while. Um, it's hard to compute. Computing the mutual information between your action and a high dimensional next state is tricky. But um, the social influence is the mutual information between an agent's action and another agent's action. And if you're in a discrete action space, that's actually pretty easy to compute. Um, so I think that provides like more intuition about why this should work. If you're asking me how I came up with the idea, I'd have to send you my, I was doing my qualifying exam. We had to do like a 24 hour take home exam. So Nando posed me this question, which was like, what other intrinsic motivations could there be? And are there any social intrinsic motivations? And I was like, ah, and it was 4 a.m. And I'd stayed up for almost 24 hours and drinking oh. a lot of coffee. I don't know. <laughs> it's in a document somewhere, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's an important piece of information. I didn't know that because I guess uh, the time crunch that you had really made you uh, think out of the box and maybe that led to this uh, structured way of saying social influence, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also like I was thinking of like, okay, well, I could go on a very crack body rant, but it's a little bit out there. I would just that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... The the thing I keep thinking about is like I I or I think this informs a lot of my research agenda like somewhat indirectly but um, I've been reading a lot of books about like um, human sociology and history and psychology and it seems like what really distinguishes humans from other animals is that we're such a powerful social learner and we gain so much from like integrating into societies and sharing information within that society and so I'm really interested in this question of like given our social environment, like what motivates us to like innovate new ideas, right? And I think there's, you could make a case for like social influence in that sense. It's like, you want to come up with an idea that people build on. You want to write a paper that people cite. 
So it's sort of like you contributed something that influenced the future research direction. Um, but that's a bit out there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That makes sense. Like it, it's more like whatever work I do has to have some kind of uh, reward structure that deals with other people in general, like how we, we do. Like if I do something, I have to have some kind of gratification based on other people's actions to that my action. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's very true. Like, I mean, obvious intrinsic motivations you could build for these types of social dilemmas would just be like empathy, which I, actually um, the group at DeepMind is exploring. So they have this like, um, uh, what is it? Inequity aversion resolves intertemporal social dilemmas. And it's just that agents don't want to have a reward that's too much higher than the group average or too much lower than the group average, which I think is a perfectly sensible intrinsic motivation. Like, I think that's true. People do feel guilty or envious and that does motivate them. But um, the problem with that from a practical perspective is that you need to know everyone else's reward to be able to compute that. And if you already know the group reward, why not just optimize it? Right. right? So, so the nice thing about social influence is you don't have to see other agents' rewards. You just have to see the actions they're taking in, their, in the environment, which I think is a much more realistic assumption, especially when you think of multi-agent problems like autonomous driving, right? Like I always say this, like the, you know, the Tesla car won't be able to observe the proprietary reward function of the Waymo car, but it can observe whether it turns left. 